Hello, we are so glad to have you with us today. I'm Luann Fulmer here with Andrew, and he's ready to explain what you need to do for retirement. His goal is to help you retire with confidence. So we have seen years of rock bottom interest rates, and some analysts think that there are some major changes in store. So today we're going to talk about what is on the horizon for these interest rates this year, because increases in rates then could send a ripple effect throughout our economy. And we're going to get Andrew's take on that. So lots of good stuff today. Let me give you that phone number that you need because you can set up an appointment with Andrew and his team. They have offices in Pensacola and Daphne, Alabama, 800-848-8768, 800-848-8768. You can call for a complimentary discovery visit, or maybe you just need a phone conversation, and they'll talk to you for 15 minutes complimentary. Find us online also anytime at swan-capital.com. Andrew, hello to you. Hey, I am so excited to talk about this really timely topic. I know. Man, we are hearing that Bank of America economists are expecting the Federal Reserve to be increasing those interest rates every single time that the central bank meets this year. So what's crazy is they have seven meetings scheduled, Andrew. <laughs> so that could be a lot of uh, interest rates being bumped up. Seven possible um, increases. How significant is this? Well, I think it's huge. Um, the Fed has to get uh, inflation under control, and one of those levers is to increase interest rates. Now, you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. The Fed is a dollar short and a day late with this. Uh, we really should have been increasing interest rates all the way back to probably 2019, uh, 2018, while the economy was uh, – processing on all cylinders and now since the markets had a 26 percent increase last year it was a perfect time to increase interest rates but now now that we have inflation now that the economy is starting to slow down now the fed is starting to think about increasing interest rates they're very too late to the party i wonder why why didn't they do what they should have done back in 2018 do you know well it's a thankless job i mean <laughs> if you say let's increase interest rate and the stock market tumbles the day you do that you know you don't want to, you want to keep the party going you want to keep the champagne flowing yeah. but the problem is is it creates a bad hangover later <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. So the story for years on interest rates is is how low they have been. Um, even though with all these increases that they're talking about, they're probably not going to get the historic highs that we saw in the 1980s. Mortgage rates in 81 hit an all-time high at 18.63%. Talk about how interest rates could impact us differently at different stage of life, stages of life. It absolutely matters in the stage of life you're in. You know, many of the retirees today were maybe still working young when they saw double-digit interest rates. They were probably buying their first house. Uh, since we work pretty exclusively with retirees, retirees would love to see, you know, 18% interest rates. But we need to be careful before we wish for those high CD savings rates in the teens again because if that's the case, inflation is probably double digits too. And we want healthy, gradual increases in interest rates. Uh, if we see a huge spike in interest rates, it's probably to the detriment of our entire country. And as a retiree, when you're depending on interest rates to provide you some mm -hmm. stable income, of course you want to see high interest rates. But you also don't want to see a high inflation environment where even though you're making great interest on your money, your money's becoming worthless every day that you don't spend it. That isn't a healthy situation. Yeah, we don't want that break even. We want to, <laughs> well, you know, we don't want to make more money and then everything goes up and it's just no difference exactly. there. Yeah. So tell us how you're talking to your retirees right now. What are their questions when they're coming in? Well, I think a lot of them have said, Andrew, what do I do with this lazy money that's sitting on the couch, that's making 1%, that's just eating potato chips? How can I get it out there working for me? And it's tough out there. I mean, if a five-year CD rate, locking your money up for five years, is at 1%, or buying a 10-year uh, bond at Amazon is 2%, uh, that's not going to keep up with inflation for the next probably 10 years. So that's where we're looking at every investment 
possible to provide diversified income for our clients to see if we can get to that three or maybe higher percentage rates, which still does not beat a 7% inflation. But if we can make three or 4%, that is better than making one or 2% every day. All right. So you are offering well, what we call a swan sleep study. Tell us about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you're listening, you say, that's me, Andrew. I have $200,000 just sitting in a CD at 1%. If I could only make 3%, I'd be so happy. These are the topics that we talk about in a sleep study to talk about how can we squeeze out and wring out some more interest out of your investments. And so take us up on our one hour complimentary visit to discuss these options by just calling 1-800-848-8768. You're listening to What Your Money Would Say with Andrew McNair, and we're so glad you joined us. Their website is swan-capital.com. It's a great resource there you can head there um, they have a monthly market recap there's a blog that uh, Andrew writes so that's cool it's all about just things that are going on right now so make sure you head to that website swan-capital.com and thanks for joining us today I'm Lou Ann Fulmer and we're talking today about what's in forecast for these interest rates later this year that is definitely the headlines going on and so we're gonna also have to think about that ripple effect that financial news can have on the market so when we see volatility start to bubble up like we have here recently, what are some things we should remember, Andrew? Well, I think the sage Warren Buffett once said, the stock market is a device which transfers money from the impatient to the patient. <laughs> and, and that is so well put. I mean, if you put temporary money into a long-term investment like the stock market, you're asking for a heartache. The stock market is not meant to be a game to be played it's a place to park assets for the long term. So if volatilities actually can be your friend in the stock market, if you're a long term investor, because you can buy on discount when it's volatile, when the market swings, you can buy for the long term. Right. Now, the Wall Street Journal recently reported that even though we're having an increase in volatility, a lot of baby boomers are just unlikely to sell too much of their stock right now because they're like, eh, you know, everything's going to come back. It's a, it's, it'll be a quick recovery. But that's what we saw back in those bear markets in the early 2000s and 2020. So could there be a problem maybe with trying to rely on market history and think we're going to be okay with where we are now? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think we have been spoiled by quick recoveries. When 2008 happened, it was a very terrible uh, Great Recession, but it rebounded very quickly because the government stepped in. 2020, the market drops 20 to 30 percent, but the government steps in. If the government has the same national debt today, Luann, that it does in World War II, percentage to GDP, after the war zone of World War II, if we have the same debt to GDP ratio, the government can't just keep on swooping in to save the day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, again, Batman and uh, Superman have to take a day off. So when that finally happens where the market needs to have a natural recession that lasts three to four years, what are the families that are retired going to do when they're used to taking three, four thousand dollars a month from their investments and they have to start selling them at a loss? And you can't wait out a storm of three to four years if you have all your money in the stock market. And that is why when we build an income plan for your retirement we want to make sure that we're prepared for a three to four year period like after the 2000s or the great depression that took a decade we need to make sure that we can give our investments certain jobs because if we don't give them certain jobs and we put it all in the stock market and the market takes three to four years to recover that means putting your vacations on hold yeah, and if you're in retirement, you don't want to do that. You know, you you have a finite time <laughs> here That's on right. this the earth. Clock's ticking. Yeah, so you want to get everything done that you're dreaming of. So then the big question is, how do we figure out? How do we have that right balance between? Okay, you know, we're taking some risk here, but also we want to be safe with our retirement savings. Well, I'm glad you asked. It gives me a chance to expound more on what I meant by giving your money jobs. The key is not balance at all. We have to have our assets in certain buckets, if you will. The first bucket is foundational. These are asset classes that cannot lose money. When you have foundational accounts that are like bedrock that can last a one to three year storm in the markets, that is bedrock. You can sleep 
you know, well at night, potentially. That's our goal at Swan Capital, helping our families sleep well at night. Well, when you have a one to three year bucket that you can pull income from, you don't have to have all your income dependent upon the stock market. Then on the opposite spectrum, you do and should have roof accounts. Roof accounts are accounts that are correlated with the stock market. When the stock market's doing great, you can expect uh, great days in the stock market and great days for your roof accounts. When it's sunny and springs in the air, it's great to have roof accounts that are correlated like stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, uh, anything that's correlated with the stock market. But we understand here on the Gulf Coast more than anyone that when a hurricane comes to town, your roof's going to take some damage. And you need to know what kind of shingles do you have. Are you going to lose 10% or 40%? And then there are wall accounts. Now, I really like wall accounts because wall accounts act independently of the stock market. Things like private equity, puts and options, index CDs, index annuities, anything that when the market goes down, it doesn't necessarily do the same thing as the market. And by having a blend of foundational accounts, wall accounts, and roof accounts, you can have a better built house. For retirement yeah you know that's easy to understand I like that the foundation the walls and the roof and you kind of explained all that when people come in so tell us how important it is to work with someone like you who can help us navigate volatility when there's all these unknowns happening at the same time well if you're not careful and you don't have an advisor on your team to put things in perspective we can fall for water cooler chats which are things like you should buy gold, buy cryptocurrency, buy this risky stock of the week. And as Warren Buffett once said, if you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, you shouldn't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. And we all need sage advice when we're thinking irrationally. We all at times are going to think about the stock of the week. And we all need someone to calm those, those greed jitters in us and say, no, we need to stick to the plan. And so no one will ever admit they don't act rationally. We all can look backwards on our life and say, yep, I'm guilty, Luann. I've acted <laughs> irrationally. Exactly. All right. So that's kind of what you're here for, to help us remain calm, right, and carry on. That saying, remain calm and carry on. Yes. And the way we do that is what we call a stress test. Instead of sticking you on a treadmill and, and sticking you know probes against your heart to make sure that your heart's acting properly, we do the same thing to your portfolio. Wouldn't it be nice to know how much stress your portfolio can take? If you were to have another 2008, would your roof accounts be able to take the high winds that we're familiar with here on the Gulf Coast? Isn't that nice to know that if you had another 2008 situation that your portfolio would lose 32%? That's great information if your limit is 25%. And this is what's so powerful about sitting down with us for one hour going through a stress test. So to take us up on this complimentary stress test, what we would need is a copy of your statement. We would need one hour to sit down and go through the Morningstar report. We use Morningstar, which is a third-party firm. They're like the Swiss. They don't care about my feelings or really anyone's feelings. And they tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of your investments. And this is a complimentary service that we do for families. So take us up on that stress test by just calling our office and leaving in the voicemail stress test. And so give us a call at 1-800-848-8768. That's 1-800-848-8768. What Your Money Would Say with Andrew McNair will be right back. Hi, you're listening to What Your Money Would Say with Andrew McNair. He's president and CEO at Swan Capital. And, of course, they have offices in Pensacola and Daphne, Alabama, if you don't know that by now. I'm Lou Ann Fulmer. Andrew has been a trusted leader in the financial services field. He's here today to share some awesome strategies about retirement planning. Now, bad habits, okay? I think a lot of us have bad habits, Um biting nails or maybe you know not eating right or maybe not saving do you have a bad habit andrew i stay up past my bedtime you know you oh. think when you get older i won't have any bedtimes but i need a bedtime i need to go to bed <laughs> but i'm like i just want to stay up a little bit later and then you pay for it the next day i know especially when that alarm goes off you're like that's no. right well i don't know i used to bite my fingernails when i was little and then i got braces and then oh. i'm i'm a rule follower and they said you can't you know <laughs> bite your nails and all that so that's that stopped me so that's good but uh, we're going to talk right now about bad habits we need to break right now regarding our money, okay? 
So three out of four Americans do not have a written plan. And we have talked about this before. So that means most of us are just winging it when it comes to spending. We're talking about a written financial plan. So how can we break that bad habit of living without a budget, especially as we're going into retirement? Well, Luann, no one likes a budget. That's why we have got rid of that term in our office. We use a spending plan, and we've created a really helpful one-page spending plan. And I love this one-page spending plan because it tracks what you're spending now before retirement, and it has another column. What am I going to be spending in retirement? And it's really nice to compare the two. So many times families have told me that I thought I was going to have like a 20%, 30% reduction in retirement on my expenses and how wrong I was, Andrew. After doing that one-page spending plan, I found out that really our income needs are only going to drop by maybe 10%. So we're actually going to need more money for retirement. And without that spending plan, they would have never known that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Very first bad habit to break, don't live without a budget. And then complacency is another habit that it's a bad habit for a lot of us because we're not making those regular adjustments to our portfolios. We're not paying attention to fees that we're paying and maybe don't even know um, just because we're just not taking the time, right, to, to take a look. So how does working with someone like you, Andrew, and your team help us from becoming too complacent about our retirement money? No, I think that's a great point. I think that's why a lot of times, like I walk around or drive to the office in a different way so that I see something that maybe I caught there's a piece of trash in in the front of our office that I want to make sure I pick that up because if I walk in the same way, I may never see what needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with your financial plan. And the key is by working with someone that is independent. If you've always driven one make a vehicle, Maybe Ford is your choice of car, but you've never experienced what a Tundra is like uh, if you drive a truck or maybe you need to experience what a Hyundai Palisade is and you say, wow, I didn't know I was missing out because I've stayed with one make for 20 years. That's the same thing that happens with people's finances. Working with someone independent means that we don't stay with one financial vehicle or one financial company. We shop all the financial institutions. We don't answer to our big parent company. We answer to our clients. And it's so important to work with someone that's independent. Even if it's not us, I would encourage you to get a second opinion and potentially work with an independent financial advisor. I want to go back to what I had just mentioned earlier about the fact that a lot of us don't even know the fees that we're paying in our portfolio, how much of an impact can fees have on our retirement? Well, I think fees matter sometimes way more than we realize. If you use historical data for a second, Vanguard, we know uh, from 1926 to 2019, an 80% stock and 20% bond portfolio returned almost 10%. It returned 9.7%, and that was every year. So what does that mean for your money? Wow. So if you were to save $1,000 a month for 40 years, your portfolio would grow to a whopping $5.8 million. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. But, but, but hang on, because you're forgetting about fees. Oh. If you factor in a 1% fee, the rate of return drops to 8.7%. So now after 40 years, that tiny fee adds up to 43 million dollars instead of 5.8 dollars so that tiny one percent fee cost you one and a half million dollars and that's 25 percent of your wealth so we make our living on fees but i am very adamant that clients should know what they're paying and the value that they're getting for it and we all know in many walks of our life that just because you pay more doesn't mean that you get more Right. What we what we want is that value. And and that's what you provide. So let's talk about that. People come in and I, 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 well, let me just back up. People who are listening might go, eh, I'm just scared about those fees. You know, I'm just going to do retirement by myself. But but we have to understand there is some value to somebody who has the education like you, you know, behind your name. And you've gone through this with retirees every single day. And so we do have to look at the value that we're getting. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, There's many studies that show that working with a competent financial advisor that's operating in your best interest can add 3% 
back to the portfolio. So if we work with a financial advisor, it could actually make a world of, of a difference because they can help us implement estate planning strategies by working with mm -hmm. an estate planning attorney. They can help us with tax strategies by working alongside our CPA. And they can also keep us from making irrational decisions when the market goes haywire. And so it's been proven based on statistics that it can add up to 3% to your portfolio by working with a financial advisor. But just because you work with a financial advisor doesn't mean that you're not paying too much. Mm -hmm. And that's why we recommend that you come in for a complimentary sleep study so that we can scan what's in your grocery cart and make sure that you're not overpaying. You know, it's funny, Luann, when we go grocery shopping, we look at the things that we spend our money on. You know, many of us have said, I think that's worth a dollar eight. I think that's worth two dollars. That can't be worth more than a dollar fifty. And when we put it in the grocery cart, we, you know, these are small items that yeah. we're checking prices on. But when it comes to your retirement, so many people don't even know how much they're paying for financial advice. And that's why we recommend that fee analysis when you come in and sit down with us. So to take us up on that stress test where we do that fee analysis, give us a call at one eight hundred eight four eight. 8768. That's 1-800-848-8768. And Andrew, when they call, tell us about that. And they're going to say, hey, you know, I'm interested in that fee analysis that Andrew was talking about. What's going to happen then? You know, I think a lot of times people think it's going to be like a dentist visit, that it's <laughs> <laughs> going to be painful. And I'm going to tell you that you should have been flossing for the last 10 years. Uh, it's not going to be anything like that. When you call, we're going to mail you out a two page questionnaire. And we're going to sit down and you have me for one hour to answer any financial question that you can muster. I'll give it my best shot. And then when I sit down with you, I'll go through that two page questionnaire and I'll find maybe three or four things. And I'll say, you know, teach your advisor how to do their job. Look it up on Google, hire us. But these are the things that we would like <laughs> to help you out with to potentially better your financial plan. And so, again, to take us up on that complimentary visit, all you have to do is call one 800 Eight four eight eight seven six eight, and then head to their website. Check them out yourself: swan-capital.com, swan-capital.com. And we thank you for joining us. This is what your money would say with Andrew McNair. I'm Lou Ann Fulmer. We're talking about bad habits, that, financial bad habits that we need to break, and leaving tax breaks on the table. That's another bad habit we need to break. How can having a tax efficient retirement strategy help us keep on track to keep more more money in our own pockets? Well, you have to remember that you don't spend gross at the grocery store. You spend net in your retirement. And also remember, if all of your money is wrapped up in a 401k or an IRA, you're not very diversified. And you might think, well, my investments are diversified. True, but your tax diversification is really low if all of your money is in an IRA or 401k. And truly, you're at the mercy of who's ever in office, whatever administration or Congress decides with tax rates. If tax rates go up and all of your money is concentrated in IRAs and 401ks and your tax rates go up, you're at mercy of what those tax rates are and you're going to potentially have less spendable income in retirement. Or worse, you're going to leave your spouse with less spendable income when you're not here. All right. So we don't want to be complacent about taxes. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, uh, we've talked about this before, there's kind of a short window of time to implement these strategies to save on taxes. So what can we do now to try to keep taxes from taking too much of a bite out of our retirement savings? Because things are going to change probably in the near future. Absolutely. I mean, change is definitely constant. So the golden decade is from 59 and a half to 72. So after 59 and a half, you can take money out of your IRA without any penalties. You still have to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. And the perspective I try to change for retirees is you're always going to pay the taxes. Death and taxes, they go together. You can't even escape the taxes owed on an IRA with dying because your spouse, if you die, you leave your spouse going from a married filing jointly uh, on her tax return to now a single widow where she's going to potentially pay even more taxes. And so that's a real shame. So what we help clients do is 
chop up this golden decade into a five to ten year period and start unwinding these IRAs and 401ks by shifting to more tax-free investments, i.e. like a Roth IRA. And that's where we come along your CPA and do tax planning instead of just tax preparation and making sure that we're looking at what's our tax liability over our lifetime, not just what our tax liability was last year. That's the difference between looking through the rear view when you're driving and looking through your windshield while you're driving. All right. So pre procrastination can get the best of us. That's a habit we should all break. What would be your message as we close out our show today of people who've been procrastinating on creating that plan for retirement? I would ask, why are you procrastinating? Because plans give confidence. If you think about it, if all we have is a portfolio or a statement, that doesn't really give us a lot of confidence because we don't have anything to resort back to when times are tough and when times are good. Because when we're on that, you know, that hilltop or we're in that valley financially, we need to resort back to the plan to make sure that greed or fear does not take over. And so you have to ask yourself, do you have a financial plan that consists of a long-term care strategy, a tax strategy, income plan for retirement, an investment methodology that maps out how you're investing over the next five years, and lastly, an estate plan to make sure that you're not going to be a burden on your family when something happens to you. If you're saying, Andrew, no, I just have statements, I just have portfolios, well, you deserve to have more confidence going into retirement, and the only way I know how is by having a full financial plan. So if you want to learn more about what a financial plan looks like, uh, give us a call to schedule our complimentary second opinion. Uh, now, a second opinion is just that. It's impossible to get a second opinion from the person that gave you your first. And so we'll sit down one hour to make sure that you're retirement ready, to make sure you do have a financial plan that is on paper. And so take us up on that offer by just calling one 800 848 87 Six, eight. That's 1-800-848-8768. I'm Andrew McNair, and I want to thank you for listening to What Your Money Would Say every week, where we help you unravel the right things that you need to do for a successful retirement. We'll see you next week.